This is the Gaumont British News, presenting the world to the world. family, an ideally happy family, a high example of the unity of the home which is the foundation of national well-being. From that day in April 1923, when the wedding of the Duke of York and Lady Elizabeth Bowes-Lyon was solemnized at Westminster Abbey, this royal husband and wife have typified those stable things in life which are most worth having. A daughter was born. And the Empire's rejoicing was a forecast of the affection that we now have for Princess Elizabeth and Princess Margaret Rose. Let us go back to those early days when the second son of King George V was a bachelor, a young man called Prince Albert. For him, life was a constant round of public duties faithfully performed, with a word and a smile for everyone. As second son, Prince Albert might have passed his time pleasantly in the sports and luxuries of the well-to-do, but that was not his way. In those days, as in these, his aim was to do his duty. And later, a share of that duty was ably taken by the Royal Duchess, the gracious, smiling lady who so quickly won her way into our hearts. In every part of the country, from Brighton to Inverness, they bore their part of the royal responsibility. Never did hospital or other charity call to them in vain. Here at Oxford with Lord Nuffield, Her Royal Highness opened the infirmary. In industry, the Duke showed ever the keenest interest. He drove trains and trucks, and he started a giant turbo alternator. He was even offered the job of ironing a shirt, but he declared the risk was too great. His Majesty has always been a keen tennis player. Here with Mr. Balfour, and at the same house party with Mr. Bonalore, he showed the form that later took him to Wimbledon. Winter relaxation was a day with the hounds. and a football match, and when summer came again, a coconut shy. The Duke took part in most forms of sport, and in nearly all he showed more than average aptitude. At New Romney and later at Southwold, we saw the beginnings of what has become a national institution, the holiday camps shared by public schools and working lads. Here the Duke's personality infused the whole venture with vitality, 
and guaranteed success. In 1920, Prince Albert figured in the birthday honours list. He took his seat in the House of Lords, and the rest of our story concerns those busy days which form the life of this royal family. With Queen Mary, and in other days with his father, King George, these pictures revive many memories. Brussels, the Duke presented the DFC to King Albert of the Belgians and later posed with Prince Leopold, two sons, now two kings. While from Dunkirk, we have selected one of the innumerable foundation stones laid by the Royal Duke. For Wales, we include a visit to Swansea for the Estefan. An Empire tour. Australia fated the royal bride and bridegroom with sunshine and smiles and cheers. <laughs> Till London welcomed them home again, with smiles and cheers, though not too much sunshine. For crippled ex-servicemen, as with all those who are sick, the Duke and Duchess have a special consideration. Of many launches, we select this from 1928 when the Duchess of York launched the cruiser which bears her name. And so the round of duty went on, St. James's Palace. Opening Weymouth Bridge. Nottingham pageant. Greenwich. By now, Princess Elizabeth was growing up. She made a charming figure as bridesmaid at the wedding of Lady May Cambridge. Glasgow, their Royal Highnesses received the honorary degree of Doctor of Laws and followed it with a little manual labor. One of the most memorable of our pictures was the ball at the Guild Hall, where the Royal guests were received by Lord Derby. the jubilee of King George V, the Duke and Duchess attended with their daughters. Our King and Queen have travelled many times by plane. Here they are leaving for the fair at Brussels. It was also in Brussels that the Duke represented his father at the funeral of Queen Astrid. At the Armistice Day service in London, the Duke of York placed a wreath upon the cenotaph 
in memory of our million dead, homage from one who shared equally the hazards of war at the Battle of Jutland. And a last sad tribute to a great king, with his brothers, he marched in the funeral cortege of George V. How soon after that were the affairs of our royal family to change again? By an instrument of abdication to the government led by Mr. Baldwin, Edward renounced the monarchy. Albert, Duke of York, became King George VI. All our thoughts were with him on that night of his accession. 1936 was a year of unhappiness and uncertainty. But the instinct of the family man is sure. It reaches out to the people of the empire as from one family to another. Long live the king and queen. God bless them.